Hey guys, I'm Will back again. Welcome to day 27th in the life of the Galaxy S23. Currently recording this video on the OnePlus 11 camera using the 4K mode, just for fun. Today I'm going to be answering a question on whether or not the S23 is waterproof and then I'll walk you through day 27 in the life. It may seem like an obvious question, but I do see people asking this on Reddit. So might as well cover it today. In terms of being waterproof, people use waterproof and water resistant interchangeably, but in reality it's not. The S23 is not waterproof, it is just water resistant at IP68. And that's pretty much common with most flagship phones these days. IP68 is about the average in terms of water resistance. And what that means is you can submerge it in the water for up to one and a half meters or 30 minutes without sustaining any damage. So it is more than enough for you to go swim in a pool, just don't swim for longer than 30 minutes. Or if you want to take a deep dive in water, you can go down to one and a half meter before damaging your phone. And interesting enough, I know people toss around IP68 rating, 64, all these random numbers all the time. It is kind of interesting to actually break down what these numbers actually mean. So for the first number, it is for the dust resistance. So that one ranges from zero to six. So six is the maximum dust resistance. So you can throw this phone in the sand or I don't know, you're in a super dusty area. You don't have to worry about dust ruining this phone. And I think most phones are dust resistant these days. So don't gotta worry about that. And the eight is the part that is referring to the water resistant. So the eight readings reflects the one and a half meter and 30 minutes underwater limit for the water resistant. And interestingly enough, the rating above that would be 9K. So if your phone is IP69K, then that phone can sustain high pressure water jets hitting it. So that is pretty extreme. I don't think there's ever a situation where your phone will be sitting directly behind a water jet and getting hit by it. So that's why most phone manufacturers don't really include the IP6. So that's why most manufacturers don't include the 9K rating. But long story short, IP68 rating should be more than enough for most people. You can shower this phone, listen to music at the beach, you can wash it with soap without worrying about damaging it. And it wasn't so and it wasn't too long ago when Samsung used to have active attached to their names. Galaxy S4 active, Galaxy S5 active, Galaxy S6 active. Those phones were usually a little bit more rugged and they have the IP68 rating compared to the regular S series. They did not have the water resistant rating prior to the S6. But from the S7 until today, Samsung have always had the IP68 water resistant rating. I'm pretty sure there are some obscure phone in the market somewhere with the IP69K rating but that is a bit extreme and you don't really need that. And if you want even more waterproof capability, you can buy an IP69 case, then your phone can be completely waterproof. But at the same time, nothing is ever really 100%. You can submerge the water for over 10 billion hours. At some point or another, I think water is still gonna find a way to get in. But those are very extreme situation and I don't think most people really need anything like that. Although the one downside of these phones being water resistant, you can shower with it, but just make sure not a lot of water get into the charging port. I have found that in prior Galaxy phones, ever since the Note 7, Samsung have been super cautious with how they handle the battery situation. So anytime the charging port is even remotely wet or there's some moisture around there, they will not even let you charge the phone. So just be aware of that. And if you are showering at night before bed, there's a chance you might not be able to plug your phone in and charge it right afterwards. If you have a wireless charger, that should be fine. And especially a standing up wireless charger would be preferable because if you already get water into the port, it may take a long time to come out. So you are standing it upright, that will allow the water to come back out versus you putting it on a flat wireless charger, then the water may still be stuck in there and you just gotta go about your day and hope the port dries up at some point. You can take some paper towel, attempt to clean it. I wouldn't recommend sticking a Q-tip in there because then you're gonna get more dust and debris stuck in there. It wouldn't hurt the phone, but at some point I would imagine it can get jammed up or get in the way when you're trying to charge it with the cable. You don't want any random dust and little particles stuck in there. 
Same with a hair dryer, I wouldn't recommend applying heat to this area either. But if it's your phone, you can do what you want. These are my recommendations. But just to just things to consider when you are thinking about showering with your phone or even going in the pool with it. This actually happened to me when I went to Iceland before I brought it to the Blue Lagoon. Super hot heat, basically a giant hot spring. Put my phone in there and actually it just died the whole trip and never turned back on. So I pretty much lost my Galaxy S8 the whole trip. But when I made it back home into the States, I put on a wireless charger and revived it back to life. Just another thing to consider, even though these things are water resistant, it is meant to be for more fresh water or just salt water. But if you're using it in a giant pool or area where a lot of people are swimming, if there's chlorine in there, it's going to impact the IP rating. So at the end of the day, it is water resistant, so just tread lightly. If you go extreme with it, you may end up like me, phoneless for a whole trip in Iceland. But it was okay, my friend had an extra phone, so I survived. Alrighty, that's just some fun fact about water resistant on a Galaxy S23. So let's jump into day 27. I woke up around 6.30 a.m. or so, did some gaming early in the morning. Today was a super... Today I got into some sports betting. They finally legalized it in Massachusetts. So start playing around with that. I'm currently using the FanDuel link, which is pretty cool. Essentially, I deposit $15 or so. I know this may sound like a scam, but I was pretty skeptical myself. But they are literally giving you free money. So I haven't even used any of my money yet. I just deposit $15 and then they give me $200 bonus. And when I started betting, I'm just betting off the free $200. No, you cannot cash out their $200 and just run away with it. The point is for you to interact with the app and if you win, you get to keep the winnings. So you can use that $200 just to bet and you use that $200, you win $200, then you can take that money and keep it. But you lose that $200 and you lose it all during these bets. That's not really your $200 to begin with. You just lost the bet and you're terrible at betting. So probably wouldn't want to stick around it much longer. Pretty cool concept. I can leave a referral link in the description below if you guys are interested. You sign up, you get $100, I get $100, so we get to bet for free basically. And I think that's only available in certain states and areas, so just be on the lookout for that if you have any issues signing up. Just make sure your local area has approved online sports betting. Massachusetts recently did it. This is why all these companies are giving really aggressive bonuses and incentive for people to sign up. And so far so good. It's been pretty fun. My fantasy season is finally over. So now finding something new to play around with. There's a whole bunch of other websites out there too, but this is a interesting one that caught my attention to start off. And I'm just in the process of learning what all these numbers mean as well. So you can bet on like so many different areas. So for the spread, how much you think the team is going to score. I don't really understand that much about it. But I know on the money column, you can select which team you think is going to win. So you think MSU is going to win, you can just put your money on MSU. Yeah, just pick whatever team is going to win. Pretty straightforward, doesn't matter the score or anything like that. And then the total column is essentially you're betting over or under. So they are saying that the estimated total is 138. So that's roughly 70 points each team. And if you think each team is going to score over 70, you will bet over. And if you think the teams combined is going to score less than 138.5, then you bet under. In this case, I don't know that much about it. I just follow my friend's bet, but he recommended over, and I think the final score ended up being 90 plus each, so that was an easy win there. And since I was just playing around with it, I bet like $11 just for fun, and it wasn't even my own money that I bet, it was FanDuel's free money that they gave me. So you can see up here, I deposit $15, and the $11 that I bet is from the bonus money that they gave me. And the one caveat with the bonus money is there is an expiration date of April 22nd. So you got about a month to use it. You don't use it, you lose it. 4 p.m., my phone is at 30% by the way. Started setting up my basket net and preparing for my baby on the way in July. 
Just throwing this thing in the bed, see how it's gonna look like. Shot on the S23 for dinner, went to my mom's house, got some pork and eggs, soup and rice. Video quality looking awesome despite the dim lighting. 6.49 p.m. phone is at 19% and Google finally turned on the VPN feature. So after I stopped checking it for a while because I forgot about it, if you go into your Google One app, you can turn on your VPN. That is if you have any of the Google One storage plan. In the past, you had to sign up for the two terabyte plan. I currently have the 200 gigabyte plan. So now they give free VPN to any of the users. And I know some people may not want to pay for cloud storage, but the way to get around that, I personally use Google Rewards app. So I make a bunch of free money there, just answering surveys occasionally. You get 10 cents here, 30 cents there. Eventually it add up to a few dollars, $10. So I just use that money towards this cloud storage. So using Google free money to use their services. Some tips and tricks there to help you guys save some money. And by 7 p.m. my phone is at 15%. So I decided to check on the battery life. I think I'll probably cap it at 15% at this point instead of going down all the way to 5%. So today we got 13 hours of battery life and close to four hours of screen on time. 42 minutes of Pokemon Go, Fan Duel sucking up a good amount of battery as well when I'm trying to figure out all the sports betting stuff. So there you have it. This wraps up day 27, another solid day. 13 hours of battery life, so I wake up pretty early in the morning, 6 a.m. Lasting me to 7 p.m. well after work. I was driving around using Google GPS navigation wireless charger may or may not be plugged in but still make it through a full work day which is more than enough for me i did do some light gaming throughout the day so it does take up battery screen on time we got close to four hours which is pretty solid it's a work day for me so i don't need to be on my phone like all eight hours or anything like that please check out day 26 if you haven't already thanks for watching please like and subscribe and see you guys in the next video